five. Top three. Number three, I should say. We actually, uh, we, we are... came to an agreement on our, our number three. It was a little movie called I Rival. It's starring Amy... So you better stop. <laughs> I can't say it. Okay. I use... It was I Rival starring Amy Adams. I am... Ah, fuck. I fucked it up. <laughs> Amy Adams. Amy Adams plays your typical housewife. And... Wait, no. That's not the right movie. No. Amy Adams plays your typical scientist. No. She plays your typical linguist. Linguist? That actually is the right one, yeah. yeah. So the whole world is being invaded by aliens. Spaceships Every- come down and just park themselves. Yeah. People don't know what the fuck's going on. And it's either Lawrence Fishburne, Forrest Whitaker, or Samuel L. Jackson that comes into our office. Wasn't Denzel. Definitely not Denzel. No, it wasn't Denzel. Denzel doesn't do parts this small. He comes into her office and he's like, it was Forrest Whitaker, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it. Comes in with his drink he's like, why are you going on in here? He's like, can you decipher this? <laughs> You're the yeah. best linguist in the world. I don't know why he sounds like that. Now. <laughs> yeah. If I really start thinking about the movie, maybe it is but dumb. But when you're watching it, it totally makes sense. If you yeah. think about it now, yeah. It's like, so, so these aliens are trying to make contact with the humans. And they go to Amy Adams, who's this like, Linguist, like world-renowned linguist. I guess she's world-renowned. I think she just has done some work with the government before, so they're like, "You're still classified, so we're gonna go to you." And so yeah, yeah, she's under contract still. Yeah, so yeah. they're just like, you know, it's only like, and she's like, "What about it's Fletcher? the most convenient thing, I guess." Yeah, but whatever. That's <laughs> yeah. just a minor part. Yeah, I don't know. That's the only part I really remember. Action. I fell asleep. Why does this feel worse? Delivered some very brilliant performances by one by Amy Adams. I guess fucking Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner was all right. He always kind of plays a pretty basic bitch. Yeah. That director, Canadian director, Dennis Valvever. Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah, he's from Quebec. He but yeah, he's dope. And gets you excited for Blade Runner. I'm sure he's going to do some good shit. Uh, my number two movie of 2016 is pretty obvious. I'm sure it'll come up on a lot of top five lists of regular ass people who saw movies and that movie is Rogue One a Star Wars story make a real difference are you with me all the way it's a prequel to a prequel no it was supposed to be the its own standalone story wasn't it it's a prequel they don't put it in the timeline, do they? Yeah, it's in the timeline. They do? Yeah, it's like 3.9. I thought this was like the one right before 4. Yeah. It's in the realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it's in the Star Wars world, but it's not a Star Wars movie. It's a it Star, is Wars, a Star, Star Wars, Wars movie. It's a Star Wars Rogue One. It's a Star Wars in the uh, But they, they, don't, they claim it as not part of that. I don't know. There was like, it was like a spinoff. I don't know. In A New Hope, there was like... A line where it said like a group of rebels or whatever. Yeah. No, I know where it, it's like, part of the thing. So they just took that and like showed the story of how they got it. So it had to do heavily with the whole story. No, but I know. it's in the Star Wars. It was world. a standalone story saying that it wasn't like gonna be its own, you know, like franchise. Yeah. It's just a standalone story within the prequel shit. So it's a prequel. That's what I'm saying. It was a prequel. Yeah. Yeah, but like it wasn't. It's so. It it's, happened in that part of time. Yeah, but it's it wasn't. It's not a Star Wars. Like it's yeah, it's a Star it's not Wars episode world. six yeah, or exactly. seven. Yeah, that's what I was eight. trying to say. It was like yeah, they they were just squeezing it in, make marketing it like it's a thing. But that's a minor thing that I like. I was like a whatever about it. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, different cultures represented in this movie. I like the strong female characters. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they had like Princess Leia up in that bitch before she died and shit. What can you say that's that hasn't been said about this fucking movie? It's just a good, good movie that got me back into the Star Wars world. I like to rewatch things. Like currently, I'm rewatching Making a Murderer right now because I'm trying to be a detective. Taking notes. I'm taking notes, being like, I'm gonna get Avery off. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get him off. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna visit him in prison. <laughs> If I can't get him off, I gotta get him off. So this is giving me a lot of incentive. And that, my friends, is my number two movie of 2016. All right, well, let's play some 
themes from Manchester by the Sea, because that's my number two. My heart was broken, and I know yours is broken too. No, you don't understand. There's nothing that's there. Not true. something wrong with me. Do you want me to call your friends? I don't know. What do you want me to do? I'm not gonna bother you. I'm gonna just sit here until you calm down. All right, I'm calming it. Would you please just go away? No. This movie was pretty sad. It started off emotional and it continued that way and then built up to a really emotional scene and then just completely obliterated all of your emotions. It was good though. It was funny. There's so many movies about like Boston and like the people in it and like the fucking accents and oh another Affleck brother like talking about Boston shit. But it wasn't. It was just played into the background of the story. So it could almost take him. Yeah, it could have taken place anywhere. It was just really good and very emotional. And that's the best performance I've ever seen from Casey. Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams. There's just like one scene in there that completely wrecks you. And I'm a sucker for feeling like I want to kill myself. So that's why this is number two on my list. My number one movie of 2016 is Moonlight. My number one movie of 2016 is Moonlight. Where is you, Sharon? I'm on time, try not to remember. <laughs> I tried to forget all those times. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you're gonna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. This movie's like three short films. All... Yeah, it's like three short films, kind of, about the story of one man's life from when he was a little kid, uh, a teenager, and an adult. And he is an African-American... A uh, poor gay man, and it's his like I don't know. It's just his story of these different parts of his life. He befriends this guy who is like the best perform. I didn't say the best. Like it really put this. What's this guy's fucking name? Mahershala Ali. Mahershala. What about the Juan character? That's <laughs> <laughs> how you say his name. Mahershala, Mahershala Ali. I don't know, man. Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's like a type of like father figure character that like comes into his life, and he's but he's like a drug dealer, and his performance is just like amazing. I saw him in uh, first in House of Cards. He's probably in a bunch of other shit before. Like he's great in that. Then he was in uh, Luke Cage this yeah. year. Mm. And when you see him, you're like, this guy's a freaking superstar. Like, why don't I see more of him? And when you see him in this movie, you're like, this, it, he's a brilliant actor. So you'd be, he, be ready to see more of him, Kevin? Yeah, be yeah. ready to see more of Mohashama Ali <laughs> in 2017, 17, 18, probably. But no, I, I just, like, really enjoyed this movie just because it was just so captivating and it was so beautifully shot, beautifully performed, beautifully beautiful that's why it was my number one movie of the year so i'll move on to my number one which is the lobster did you read the leaflet yes i did as you understand from your brother's experience if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here you'll turn into an animal mm, I yeah. well tables have turned haven't they yeah. you go to this place if you're single but the one stipulation is you have to either find somebody or you get turned into an animal story that's told there it's just it's incredible it's like very indie style it's but it probably they had a decent budget they had Colin Farrell up on there but he plays not the typical Colin Farrell character he plays this like lonesome like nerdy kind of like inverted type guy and uh, I think it was um, like it's about time that he made a comeback he did the he did the true detective stuff which wasn't as good I, like, I liked his character in it. that dark Voice. Yeah. Like, hey, you want to uh, come over here? And, uh, it's my gay porn voice. <laughs> <laughs> it had re some really good moments in there too, where these some characters question why they're even there and how they how, why they're gonna get turned into an animal, which uh, obviously lot. you would. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. The recruit. Yeah. Alexander. I'm the new world. <laughs> oh, yeah. The new world. Yeah. Oh, Alexander. <laughs> what the fuck was that? 
But I'll tell you, this, this guy does a lot of blow. Oh, yeah. He's a fucking party boy, man. Yeah. Fright Night played a fucking vampire. Horrible, Horrible bosses. bosses. He's funny. He's, yeah, he's funny in that. What movie we were talking about? The Lobster. I haven't seen it. You, you're like a brother to me. Oh, you're my best friend in the whole world. I don't think I'm your best friend in the whole world. It's a really weird movie. Scott likes weird movies. I, I highly recommend it because it was just a cool, cool experience to see. It was just like a fantasy type movie set in like a real world people. I don't know. It was cool. Check it out. And I just want to point out that I don't like reviewing movies because it's difficult for me to do. I like almost every movie I watch because I can appreciate it for what it is. I like bad movies, good movies. I think they're all pieces of work and just like I get enjoyment out of it not necessarily because something wasn't done correctly like what does that even mean think about it fucking jerks this one was posted by Phil Hendricks and he did not like the movie The Lobster if you enjoy mindless despair violence of all forms and question mark question mark question mark question mark on a stick which I assume is shit on a stick you will love this waste of talent and film it is two hours you will never get back again. And worse, it will kill billions of brain cells. Guidelines call for a minimum of ten lines in order to post a review. Two lines is far more than it deserves, and a review would be done with two words. They will not allow their mention here. <laughs> so, so, so he, wants to, he wants to review it in two words, but you can't because you need to do it. <laughs> He's already written more than two. I know. This is the review, you idiot. <laughs> Spickball movie about horrid people. One out of a ten. Doc Weas Weasel Band. This movie attempts to normalize and empathize with people who are sexual deviants, prostitutes, molesters, drug addicts, and people who give drugs to kids, etc. There's not a sympathetic character among them. Though, I guess we're supposed to feel sorry for the main character because he had a harsh childhood. That's no excuse for becoming a pimp and a crackhead and a drug dealer, which isn't that doesn't happen in the movie. <laughs> Avoid if you are a normal, law-abiding, and moral human being. If you enjoy movies about low-lives druggies of most degenerate and disgusting drug in the history of degrading drug abuses, people who sell their body for drugs, and those who pimp them and their families... I, that, that doesn't even happen in this movie. People who molest young boys... Nobody, nobody does that in this movie. <laughs> but they are gay, so they will get a pass. What? What movie are you talking about? I don't know. Moonstone is the worst movie <laughs> I've ever seen. If it was a young girl they were molesting, the movie wouldn't be so sympathetic. Then this is your lucky day. See Moonlight. I would predict Hillary voters will enjoy it. <laughs> Doc Weasel Band, if you're out there. Yeah, go Trump. Kill yourself. No problem. Like, don't don't tell me what the best movie is, is, man. This I'm, is information hey, that is not getting it. I'm a grown ass man. Thank you. Key Peel. Yeah, I know it mostly just for the sketch. Like the substitute seat to sketch. Discretion is my middle name. Fuck it. Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner huh. is alright. Two new voicemails. Mind if I check them? I guess we got our own little uh, secrets. So. <laughs>